Ooh, ah. You guys know what this means. It's time to look at another snooze. This is something I'm very excited about. This is Yenaral. Let me reposition the label here so everything looks nice and perfect. There we go. As always, my name is Matt. This is Snooze at Home. I'm very excited to present to you another Snooze. This, of course, as mentioned, is General Lus. Uh, General Lus. General is one of Swedish Match's most esteemed brands. It's sort of the, alongside a ton, it would probably be considered their flagship product, even more so than something like Jotobor's Rapia or uh, other things like that, or Lacket. Yenerel is a bergamot, black pepper, and leather flavored snooze. So saith the website that Swedish Match has online. Uh, but there is a little bit more going on with this, so I'm very excited to show you what's going on. Yenerel is a very, very old brand, by the way. I think it's been around since the 1800s. Uh, Swedish Match was not the company that originated all of these things. So, Yenerel, Jotobor's Rapia, um, Etan, they were all originally different factory snooses. And so I think something like, um, what do I want to say? Um... Well, it doesn't matter. So Yenerel was made by the Yenerel Snooze Fabrik, I think. And Etan was, of course, made by Friedrich Junglov in his Snooze Factory. And Yotoborg's Rapia, I believe, may have originally been made by um, uh, Lundgren's Snooze Fabrik. But then the war happened. I forget which one exactly. I believe it may have been World War One or two. They needed a little bit of money to fund soldiers' pensions, and they monopolized the snooze industry. And then uh, they had to have a tasting panel because there were hundreds and hundreds of snooze blends available on the Scandinavian market. So they presented a panel of uh, judges this snooze and a couple of others, and they deemed this one good enough to stand out amongst hundreds of other snoozes to be uh, available for sale. Pardon me. So without further ado, let's get into it. I want to show you guys the label here, if I can, if the autofocus will permit me, please. I'm going to tap the camera, guys. Don't be alarmed. There we go. Ingredients are water, tobacco, salt, a sour regulation material, that would be the alkalizer, and a flavoring, including a smoke flavoring, which most Swedish match stuff has. Beautiful and very distinguished can. Mine has a split in the middle, but that's okay. Gold top with a custom plastic lid. Yenrel, the original Swedish news since 1866. This is also available in a portion and a white portion, along with some differently strength variants. Let's open it up. I have had a little bit of this for the written review, and if you guys aren't reading those reviews on snoozeathome.com, what are you waiting for? Snooze at Home is a beautiful website. I made it myself. And you get written full reviews that have a little bit more than what you see on this channel. Autofocus is kind of going wonky again. Let me go ahead and get a better picture. There we go. Of course, we have this nice, moist, feta cheese-ish puck of tobacco. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could lift the whole thing out here. Et voila. Look at that. And of course, you can see it's packed in a fiberboard can. I find that the fiberboard cans do a decent enough job of storing the snooze, but the plastic ones much, much better. Uh, the fiberboard can has a tendency to lose moisture after a time. This is not necessarily a bad thing according to my taste, because I actually find that Swedish match snooze arrives just a little bit too moist, and I actually like it to be a little bit drier, because when it's moist like this, it has a tendency to mudslide. Let's smell the can, and I'll tell you what I'm smelling. I have always found Yenerel very hard to describe. Um, a lot of other people will say that it's it's just like bergamot, like Earl Grey tea. That's not quite it. Earl Grey tea 
for a very, very long time has been made with uh, a percentage of lemon oil. So the true smell of bergamot is kind of disguised by this brighter, sharper, more soapish smell. What I get out of it first and foremost is leather. And that's going to be like a leather belt that you rubbed or like a shoe store, that kind of smell. It's not a especially dark flavor. Um, leather sometimes has connotations with like dark or sophistication. It's actually a much brighter, more floral smell than you would expect when you're smelling it out of here. It smells quite sweet. There is maybe a little twang of smokiness, sort of like the twang of uh, scotch whiskey. I actually happen to have some here, so I can smell and see if I'm misplacing the taste. This was for a earlier video released, I think, a week ago. Uh, well, no. Uh, I've gotten my recordings mixed up sometimes. I schedule videos. Yeah, that would be the slightly rubbery smokishness of whiskey. This is for a video where I smoke Perique three times in one sitting. You'll be able to check it out soonish. Anyways, let's have a taste and see what we're dealing with. As always, if you would like to support the channel, you can buy a couple of different accessories on my various websites, snoozeathome.com first and foremost, but if you don't like it, I also have an Etsy and an eBay. Filt improves your snooze experience by allowing you to use this stuff at work, which is a magical, magical thing. It's just a spool of filter paper. It's not that expensive and it makes it way more convenient to use loose snooses, including the homemade snooze that is the bread and butter and objective of this channel. Of course, you can also support me on Patreon. Let's stop dilly-dallying and get into the snooze. This stuff pinches really, really well. I know a lot of you guys have trouble with doing the so-called hillbilly pinch, so I'll just give you a quick guide right here. Take your fingers, place them like this in a little grippy posture, and then instead of pinching like a pair of tongs, you're actually going to jam your fingers in, scrape it once, maybe twice, and you'll have yourself a perfect pinch. There's no need to bake any Swedish match looses I've found. They all hold together pretty, pretty good. The manufacturing on this stuff is top-notch. Cheers. Woo. If you're new to this channel, the review format is this. I'll tell you what I'm tasting right now. Soon, but right now. And then I will revisit you every 15 minutes until this noose is so mudslidey that I can no longer tolerate having it in my mouth. What I taste right now is a very sharp bergamot. Bergamot kind of has two sides. There are two wolves inside bergamot. One is the brighter, more brilliant, more floral bergamot that you sometimes get with um, Earl Grey tea, as so mentioned, but that stuff is mixed with lemon, so that can be kind of hard to pick apart from the lemony odor. And then on the other side, you have this really warm, spicy, almost like almost sweet in a way, like saccharin sweet type of smell. And that is what I consider true bergamot. That is the bergamot of stuff like men's cologne. And um, I don't know, that one is, is a much harder smell to describe on camera. Just think of it as a lemon, but much more bitter, much more floral, and much warmer smelling. Sort of like how cinnamon smells very warm as compared to a chunk of regular wood. Not spicy, maybe a little spicy, but that's the bergamot we're dealing with. And that is actually not too strong. I've had bergamot snooses that are just way too much. That bergamot note is riding on top of a base of a strong graphite minerality. This stuff for me has a tendency to go pretty bitter, so I expect that minerality to build as the review goes on. And behind that all, there is a nice saltiness, not nearly as salty as a ton, but it's there. And then there is a little tiny bit of sweetness. Not sugary sweetness, and not sweetness that's like, ooh, this is sweet stuff, but it's sweet in the way that certain 
that certain dry wines can finish sweet. So it's not sugar, but it's sort of the opposite of bitter in a platonic sense. I will see you guys on the couch so that we can describe the first 15 minutes when that comes along. I'll see you then. Woo! Nice haircut, right? It's been about 15 minutes. Um, not much has changed since the initial insertion, I guess you could say. If anything, it's just lost a little bit of its bergamot sharpness and has kind of dialed back onto just a generalized sweetness and then a little bit of salty minerality, like the minerality of the ocean. This is not an uncommon thing with a lot of snooses, but it is the salty sweetness part, but it is kind of an uncommon thing to lose your top note 15 minutes in. That bergamot, from all the times that I've had Yenerol, will come back in about 15 more minutes once moisture actually gets into the snooze, and it will come back in a very big way. Um, nicotine is also starting to hit, as with most of Swedish matches loose snooses. It's not exceptionally strong. I take prillas that are a little bit bigger than the average person may take, I find, so it's strong for me, but I know that it's middle of the road as far as loose snooze goes. I make my own stuff, so I know, I really, really know when a snooze is strong. Uh, yeah, it's... It's a very round flavor at the moment. There's nothing particularly sharp in any direction about it. There's no kind of like um, citrus brilliance that's come out. There's no kind of like over sweetness that's come out. It really just feels like I have a prilla of snooze in my mouth that will not stay the same for long, I promise. But um, 15 minutes in, Yenerol tends to be pretty unexciting. So I'll see you in 15 more minutes for the 30 minute check in. Okay, it's been 30 or so minutes, nicotine is really starting to kick in, and I've had a cup of coffee, so it's strong, <laughs> to be quite frank. The bergamot has livened up a little bit, it is a little bit sweeter than it used to be, but that sweetness is attached to the bergamot. There is a leather taste still behind all of this, I should mention, I didn't mention it last time. It's a very... It's hard to describe precisely what exactly that means when I say leather. The, the closest thing that I can think of is like uh, something meaty, but not savory. It's just like a meatish thing. It doesn't disrupt anything at all. It doesn't taste like beef or anything like that. It's just a little bit of umami with some floral, like florality, with some floral something behind it and then there's still the sweetness there's still the minerality a little bit there is a twang of bitterness going on the snooze is starting to moisten up in my mouth it's not mud sliding or anything it's just a kind of opening up a little bit yeah nothing supremely different i'll see you back in 15 minutes for the final check-in I've been cooking, so it's been a little bit longer than 15 minutes. Um, this is about as long as this snooze can go, 45 minutes before it starts mudsliding. And it has already, I started here, and it's kind of pushed its way across my mouth. But, some interesting things have happened, and this happens with Yenerol pretty much every single time I have it. So the first thing worth noting is that the bergamot comes back in a very big way. The sweetness also increases. I think the sweetness is tied to the bergamot that I'm getting from it. But along with that, the graphite-ish mineral, minerality to it becomes very bitter. It becomes like way, way, way more bitter. It's sort of like stale black pepper type of bitter. And that may be because of the black pepper. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it could be. Anyways, Yenerol is a, it's a fascinating snooze. It's got a, a great history. It's got a lot of years behind it. It's got a lot of popular fans, but I personally don't think it's one of my favorites compared to something like Etan, where it's like straight line tobacco with a little bit of cocoa and has very complicated notes that are nice to tease out. And Yiltabor's Rapia, which is consistently very nice. I find Yenerol to be a thing that I have to be in the mood for. And then when I'm in the mood for it, I have it, and then I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's not so great. I encourage you to try it at least once. 
I don't think that you will perhaps fall in love with it as much as you might the other snooses in the line, but it is still worth giving a try. Anyways, that is the Snooze review for today. Of course, visit snoozeathome.com to check out the written review of this filmed review, and I will see you next time. Peace.